the myosin head, and then there's the actin filament, and right. the myosin head kind of attaches to the actin filament. Right. And the myosin head kind of snaps back, and right. the ATP is released. And when, what does the ATP do um, in that well, situation? In that release. How, is it, how does the ATP function in that situation? Well, yeah, but it's fuel for everything. But in that particular situation, how does it work? The ATP recocks the head position. That's what they think. Now, it resets the head so that it's ready for the next contraction. In other words, the heads pull the fibers together like this. Over about how much of the length? About a quarter of the length of the entire filament is all that a sarcomere can contract, isn't it? In other words, if my bicep goes from here to here, how much has it changed its length? About a quarter of its own length and that's about all it can do. If we can only get a shortening effect out of 25% of the contractile length of a muscle belly, how in the hell do we sprint? Inner joint coordination? Hmm? Inner joint coordination? Well, that's kind of, well, that's kind of part of it, but what about this thing here? The leverage, once again, multiplies the length of the contraction. Think of it from the other direction. If my bicep attaches right here, we're just gonna do the distal function of the bicep right now. And it inserts, it's got an origin up here and an insertion down here. Everybody understands those terms, right? Origin and insertion, right? Well, if it originates here and inserts down here, remember we're only contracting one fourth of the length of the muscle belly because of the limitations imposed on us by the sarcomere, right? But look how far this end of this bone moves. In other words, the leverage multiplies the effective length of the contraction by having it work down here. Remember my mechanism of explanation for mechanical advantage last night? Same thing, huh? So the sarcomere is the basic unit of muscle contraction, right? And a muscle fiber is made up of a whole bunch of sarcomeres arranged in a long line. And a motor unit is the basic unit of neuromuscular organization. A motor unit is one motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers or muscle cells that it is attached to. That's what a motor unit is. Okay. One nerve attached to multiple muscle fibers is a motor unit. And when the nerve receives a signal, an electrical impulse, an electrical potential is conducted down the length of the nerve's axon, and it goes into the fibers that compose the motor unit, and those fibers, in response to that action potential, go into contraction by the mechanism that you discovered last night in the sarcomere, okay? And when it goes into contraction, it just contracts. It gets shorter to the extent of its capacity. In other words, it's either on or off. It's like the lights, it's either on or off. There's no rheostat. You got a light switch. The sarcomere is either in contraction or it is not in contraction. 
all or nothing kind of a deal. So how do we produce a partial, a sub-maximal muscle contraction? Recruit less motor units. The term recruitment. Motor unit recruitment is critical here. Okay? Motor unit recruitment is the concept of pulling a certain number of motor units into contraction at one time. In other words, for a maximal muscle contraction, a 1RM squat, for example, you recruit all, theoretically, of the available motor units into contraction. For a 30% muscle contraction, 30% of 1RM, you would, con you would recruit some fraction of that number into contraction. In other words, there's no mechanism for the partial recruitment of a sarcomere's contraction, right? If you want to contract at a sub-maximal intensity, then you contract a sub-maximal number of motor units. And that's the mechanism by which this is controlled, okay? Anybody have any questions about this mechanism? We're not going to go into huge, giant detail on it because that's not our purpose here. But, and I don't know that much about it. And I don't know that, actually, I don't know that anybody does. <laughs> but we have to understand the basic mechanism here. You send a nerve signal down into your muscles. And some fraction of that muscle fiber goes into contraction depending on the intensity with which you want the thing to contract. Got it? Yes. 